Well, hello, Community Bible Church. Welcome to another edition of Peter in Prayer. Hope you're having a good week. Uh, and uh, this Thursday morning, I want to invite you out if you're in the Brooksville area to our service on Sunday morning. And uh, so Brooksville, Spring Hill, Hernando County at 1045 uh, here at our address. Um, and so uh, we're going to have a wonderful time as we continue through the book of Matthew in chapter 24. Uh, going to be paralleling what we're talking about here today in 2 Peter chapter 3 very closely. And uh, But if you're not, then you can always watch on our YouTube page or our website. I think everything was uh, uh, working fairly well this last week to watch live. And so hopefully you can join us there if you are uh, still social distancing because you're high risk or anything like that. Uh, we're going to continue with the overflow room um, uh, for a little bit longer here as people are still, a uh, handful of people are still using that. Uh, and, but then everything else as far as from the programming standpoint is kind of back to normal. We're just still trying to ask people to uh, do their best to, uh, uh, you know, refrain from the, the hugs and, and stick to waves and smiles and things like that. Uh, but we're looking forward to seeing you. But let's get into 2 Peter uh, chapter 3 verses 8 through 10 today. And uh, before we do, let's say a prayer as always. Father, uh, I pray that you would reveal yourself to us, uh, Lord, that, that it would be a time of refreshment uh, for every single one of us as we uh, glean a little bit more about your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so we're going to start in verse 8. It says, uh, But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. Now, we uh, we need to be reminded about exactly what we're talking about here, right? Uh, these were, he was still referencing the false prophets of the... Uh, during his time that we're looking around and saying, well, God is never going to come back. God is never going to judge the, the unrighteous. Uh, we can just continue to live however we want. And so Peter then reminds them and says, but don't overlook this. Don't forget this one fact that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. Now we look at that and, and we say, that's a long time, right? As well, that's what the idea is. Now, I, I don't believe that God actually has a calendar uh, where, you know, it takes him a thousand years and then he marks off you know January 1st there we go let's move on to January 2nd uh, but rather what the idea here is that one that God is timeless that he is literally outside of time and, and so as we consider it as we look at it and, and try to understand um, you know why it's taking God so long to move God says well I, that's time doesn't bother me at all. I've been around since eternity past to eternity forward. I'm outside of it. And so if we think of time as kind of like a, a ruler, um, God's the one that's holding the ruler. <laughs> he's, he's the one that can control all that. And so, uh, so it doesn't bother him that it takes a while. And so for the uh, false teachers, they were saying God's never going to come back. He's, he's been like this. Um, he's been waiting for so long to judge. But, but Peter's like, hey, no, God's just God's just outside. He can be patient. Uh, and so for a thousand years, uh, one day is like a thousand years. It, it reminds me, I believe, of Psalms 84, where it says better is one day in your court than a thousand elsewhere. Uh, and so even just one day uh, with the Lord is better than a thousand uh, years elsewhere because that is just how God's economy works. In verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises, as some count slowness, slowness but is patient towards you. And I'll, I'll stop right there because that's a very important distinction for us. Um, we often want to see God as slow or tempted to see God as slow uh, because we pray, we pray for good things, we pray for the salvation of family members, of friends, that the God, God would meal, uh, heal our land and, and all sorts of good things and he, and he doesn't do it, it seems like. And we're saying, God, why are you so slow to answer my prayer? I want it done to be right now. But it says that God is not slow as we count slow, slowness, but rather he is patient towards us. And that's a completely different idea, whether being slow or patient. Uh, and so patient, it means that God is simply just waiting to do something. It's not that he's is able to do it, but he's purposefully waiting, holding back, holding and saying, no, it's not the right time yet. And it, look at this is the reason why not wishing that any should perish, 
but that all should reach repentance. Now, this is a very important theological phrase, this last little part here, uh, because one, it answers that there are some people that says, oh, God doesn't actually want everybody saved, um, that, that, they're, that he purposely will send people, he purposely uh, doesn't like certain people and sends them to hell, doesn't want them to be saved. And, and, and that just contradicts what this verse is saying, that he, that he doesn't wish that any should perish, uh, but that all should re reach repentance. Others will might say uh, have said well that means that he d that nobody's ever going to die and go to hell because if God wants nobody to perish and nobody's actually going to perish and go to hell uh, but I don't think that's what it's teaching either here because uh, I'd rather he it's saying that he yes this is what his desire is and, and so one you need to understand that wherever you are whoever you are whatever you've done that God does not want you to perish he wants you to reach repentance now the only way for us to have a relationship with him and to uh, get to heaven one day is that we actually do repent though and, and so this is conditioned on whether we repent whether we perish or not is about our repentance and so I've said it before and I'll say it again, that the only person that's ever going to send you to hell is yourself. Uh, that, that God does not desire for you to go to hell, uh, but rather whenever we actively reject God and refuse to believe in him, then that is what's going to happen, that we will perish. And that's what these false teachers were heading straight into. But God was saying, no, I'll, I'll be as patient as I can. I'll give you as much time as I can uh, if you just simply repent. And, and verse 10, to finish it off here, it says, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. That day of the Lord phrase is a very common phrase, especially in the Old Testament, Old Testament prophets. They would often talk about the day of the Lord whenever like the Babylonian army or, or one of the other armies were coming in, and they were going to destroy it. And they would say, the day of the Lord is coming, that God's vengeance and justice will come, is, is kind of the idea there. Um, ultimately, though it, it refers to the ultimate judgment of God at the last uh, days at uh, the second coming the tribulation after the tribulational time is the ultimate day of the Lord now we say that doesn't sound right day of the Lord that should be like a happy time praise Jesus time uh, but really kind of carries the connotation um, whenever there's a hurricane or earthquake the, in the insurance business they call it uh, what an act of God is what they call those big calamities whether you like that name or not that's what they call it and this is kind of the same thing and the day of the Lord is kind of like an act of God like something major um, is going to come and cause, and cause destruction and it will come like a thief uh, John chapter 10 talks about how the thief uh, in the night comes and, and, and he's, he surprises people and things like that. Uh, but he's saying the day of the Lord will come like a thief, um, which parallels very close to uh, Matthew 24. Whenever we are reading through this, uh, this upcoming Sunday, we're even going to be talking a little bit about this. Uh, but one of the things the disciples were asking Jesus uh, at the end of his life is like, hey, what's the sign? What should we look for to know that you are actually coming back? What, what's going to be that sign? sign and God Jesus does give him several of the signs that are in the tribulational time but at the end he says but it's really going to be like a flash of lightning coming from the east to the west uh, is what's going to happen whenever Jesus Christ comes back again in judgment and basically the idea there is if you are waiting for a sign it's already too late and he needs encouraging them to believe right now and this is the same idea here the day of the Lord it's going to come like a thief and you will not know it's going to happen. You will not be prepared if you are waiting and saying, oh, I'm just going to push this off a little bit longer, a little bit longer, a little bit longer. One day you, you won't understand it or you won't expect it, but it will come like a thief and that judgment will come. And so he says the heavens will pass away with a roar. Uh, we know that in the end times it says that the heaven and earth will pass away and there'll be a new heaven and a new earth uh, as a prophecy uh, foretells there. And so it says that the heavens will pass away with a roar. That sounds like uh, something dramatic happening, right? And, and it goes on. Heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved. In Matthew 24, the passage we'll be talking about, it talks about um, that the, the stars will fall from the sky, it says. So whether that's asteroids or something else, that, that there'll be all sorts of craziness, crazy events happening at the end times. And this parallels it perfectly that the heavenly bodies, even even thinking that things in space and, and will be happening at the end times. And the earth and the works that are done 
will on it will be exposed. And that's ultimately where that judgment comes from. God is going to judge those that are righteous and those that are unrighteous. Ultimately, those that are righteous, we're going to be able to stand before God's throne and say, uh, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Jesus is actually going to be able to say that. And then we, our good works, will be judged and rewarded and, and, and be celebrated. And we can throw those crowns back on Jesus. For the unrighteous, they're going to stand there before holy God and try to give their de best defense. And they will not have any uh, because the unrighteousness will be judged. And, and so we look at this and we say, man, that, that's some heavy stuff. But don't remember. Don't forget what it said in verse 9, that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all reach repentance. And that's the hope that we cling to. And so I encourage you, wherever you are, whenever you're watching this, um, to uh, if you haven't ever put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, today's the day. Today's the day. And if you are a Christian um, and you know other non-believers, um, don't be slow, uh, but, but let this be an urgency to you because it says that the Lord is going to come back like a thief and, and we won't expect it. So now's the day to try to reach those family members, try to reach those friends with the love of Christ. So that's what I have for you. Let's take a few minutes here uh, and just finish off with prayer. There's several people I mentioned in my prayer um, that especially just need um, some love and support during this time. Uh, um, some have had family members pass away or are dealing with health crisis, so you'll hear me mention a few in there. But Father, we love you. Lord, I thank you just for your word. Thank you for the encouragement it is to me. Uh, Lord, I pray that this is a um, something that, that causes every single one of us to be mindful and expectant about when you come back, Lord. Um, Lord, I do just uh, lift up some of the concerns that are in our church right now. It just seems like there's, um, in the last week or two, there's been so many heavy things um, start to kind of pile up on several people in the church. And so, uh, Lord, I, I just pray for Philip right now. I, I haven't um, gotten the update as of yet about how his surgery has gone and so Lord I pray though that that went well um, Lord I pray uh, that just for uh, Tony um, uh, one of our other new faces around here and, and his mother I know that he's going up to Oregon to try to visit her as she's in hospice and uh, hasn't got a good report and so I pray for healing for her uh, and I pray that Tony's able to get up there and have some good time with her uh, Lord, I, I pray uh, for Tony and Dee's friend, uh, um, uh, Autumn, uh, as she has uh, recently passed away from an accident, I believe, and, and uh, just give comfort and peace to that whole family as well. Uh, Lord, I, I pray for Vicki Johnson's family with the passing of her father, and, and uh, also, of course, for Janet's um, family as well as she passed away. And so there's just so many heartaches, there's so many hurts right now uh, across the board, and I'm sure that there's many more that I haven't yet mentioned. Um, some ministries outside of our church that I know are just hurting as well but you know them and we thank you for them and we thank you that you are um, always come in at the perfect time, uh, whether that is the end time coming or whether it is um, whenever in our hour of need ourselves. We love you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you for joining me, guys. I will see you here uh, next Tuesday or Tuesday, same time, same place.